about today is um, how to get into treatment, basically. What to do if you're on a waiting list, um, where to start, and how to really make treatment work um, to start your recovery. Okay, so let's start at the top, if you're on a waiting list. So if you're on a waiting list, I think even before you get on a waiting list, the thing to um, focus on is what program is going to work best for you because there's a lot of different programs that are out there. And I think it's important to make some calls and get familiar with what each program has to offer. Um, I think if the program that you want to go into has a waiting list, there are some things that you can do. Um, number one is not to give up. Um, keep trying, keep making your calls. Um, another thing that you can do is start your treatment yourself by going to self-help meetings, church, um, whatever positive support system that you might have in your life or um, support people that you have in your life um, to get connected to them, reach out for help, um, and keep those contacts while you're waiting to get into that bed or into that program. Um, I think that it can be really discouraging for people when they're on a waiting list because it seems like it takes forever and um, a lot of people want to give up and I think the most important thing is not to give up, that um, it will happen. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time. Um, in the meantime though, also getting into a routine is helpful. So starting with just waking up the same time every day, um, getting on a little bit of a schedule will be helpful to get the process started before you go into treatment. At, um, in looking for a program that is um, right for you, I think people need to take into consideration um, their own their own lifestyle. So, you know, there's women's programs specifically for women. There's um, programs that are specifically targeted for um, the, the LGBT community. Um, there's men's programs. I think it's important um, for people to look into whatever programs they feel like they can identify with. Um, I think people go into treatment and they think it's going to be comfortable and easy and um, it shouldn't be. Treatment should make you a little bit uncomfortable because it, because it should be unfamiliar. It should be teaching you some stuff that's new. Um, and so I think sometimes people go into treatment and they have a first couple days where they don't feel like they're in their comfort zone and they want to quit. And um, you know, being uncomfortable can be a really beautiful thing because that's where the change happens. And if you can embrace it and you can stick with it, um, I think that people would have a really good chance of success. Or, you know, if you need help, or if um, you know somebody else that does, you know, you can call hotlines, call 211, reach out to whatever's in your community. Um, there are people and places that can help, and it's not hopeless. It can work. You just have to give it a try. Mm -hmm. um, recovery is something that we have to work on for our whole life and it's something that is always at risk to lose. So, um, you know, I think that it takes what it takes for people. Sometimes the first time is it and it works um, and they're able to maintain some sobriety. I think for other people it's more difficult and they might have to go in, you know, eight times, 12 times, you know, maybe it's a 10 year process, but I think that um, people shouldn't give up and just keep trying. And so it's important to remember that our recovery has to come first. If we're not taking care of ourselves, then nothing else is going to work.